you'd have to live under a rock if you haven't heard about dry ice cleaning in the past year. In this video, we're gonna interview some experts in the industry and find out everything that you need to know about this new innovative way of cleaning. Hi, I'm Gennard from Dry's Energy. Hi, I'm Scott Ailes uh, with Dry's Nation. I'm Jacob from I'm Detailing. How'd you get into Dry Ice? It's a failed attempt at retiring. I had a dozen cars and I was gonna clean the cars. Thought it'd be fun to swan song out of the automotive industry for 41 years and just clean a few, put them on, bring a trailer, have some fun. And next thing you know, all my cronies in the car space, like, oh my gosh, how did you clean that car? What'd you do? It's just crazy. And next thing you know, um, here I am. When did it start? Since I saw some auctions actually in the, on Bring a Trailer two years ago, three years ago actually. And I was very impressed what, what people can do with the dry ice because that was very new technology at that time. And I just did some research and tried to save some money. It took me almost two years and then I was able to buy the machine and I was, I was actually first in California who did it. So that was pretty good for me. How did it all start? Why did people start using dry ice? Whoever started the car side, that person hasn't been identified. It certainly wasn't me. Uh, it was at least 17 plus years ago. I know that there's, um, the, the industry goes back to the 40s and there's a big evolution, uh, I think in the 80s, where the systems went from a two hose siphon style system that we're all pretty much accustomed to in sandblasting uh, it went to a single hose system. And what, what that changed is it allowed more velocity and pressure. So it was, it was more effective. Somewhere in the 15 to 20 year ago range, somebody decided, let me try this on a car. Media blasting has been around for some time now. The first abrasive blasting process was patented by Benjamin Tillman on October 18th of 1870. There are several variants of this process using media to blast surfaces, including soda, walnut blasting, sand blasting. What makes dry ice blasting so special? What I know, the, there is a three factors what's cleaning with the dry ice. And for me, it was very important that there is no involved water or anything like what it making, it shouldn't make any moisture. Oh, when I talk about dry ice cleaning, people always tend to mix it up with watered ice and dry ice. They tend to think it's the same. Obviously, it's not because water ice is frozen H2O and uh, dry ice is frozen CO2. And these are just completely different um, angle, uh, different materials. It's water ice, when it melts, it melts down to water. So you have an ice cube and after that you have water in your ice. When actually, when you take the dry ice in a glass and it melts, it vaporizes to, to a gas. The advantage of that is when you clean with dry ice, the basic advantage is there's no liquid involved. So you can clean any electronics, you can clean you know, anything else without having the problem about thinking about drying time because there's no liquid, no water involved. That's the basic advantage about it. And the dry ice alone, it's cleaning with the, some type of explosion. And it's almost like when you imagine looking at a desert, the ground of a desert, sometimes you see all the cracks in, in the earth because it's so dry. That's basically what happens when the dry ice hits the surface and the dirt, it, it's drying it up. So the next dry ice pellets, they just go in these cracks and crinkles and they expand by 70,000% within a microsecond. So it's just like a micro explosion you have on the surface, but the, and then the solid state turns in the gas state, like I said, and it's just ripping off, ripping off the dirt. So you basically have three elements of cleaning. It's the temperature, minus 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Then it's the kinetic energy of the pellets hitting the surface. And the third one is the expansion, which is like 70,000% and just like this. There's no doubt that dry ice cleaning is gonna be a revolutionary way to clean in the detailing industry. But before you go out and spend a bunch of money, buy a machine, let's learn the benefits, the challenges, and limitations of dry ice cleaning. The first challenge is definitely what I can tell. What was it like? It was the money. That was number one because uh, when I talked first time with Scott, that was the guy who actually promoted this business a lot. 
and he told me that the machine is like forty, forty-five thousand dollars. When I realized, like you know, five, fifty thousand dollars, I cannot just save it. It will be difficult for me. I actually did after six, seven months. I call him. I'm ready to buy, and he told me you need another fifty for compressor for other things. I was like, okay, I'm done with ice. The only limitation is not having the experience to know how far you can push it, right? So you can damage leather. Leather is very tricky. I. I universally tell people that I do not recommend trying leather. Unless you want to try leather, if you have a spare piece to practice on, it's, it's very challenging and high risk because one false move and, and you've literally ruined the leather. When I got the machine, that was a little bit problem with uh, the training because the guy who sold me the machine, he trained me only through phone, he told me like, push this button, this and that, and you are kind of good to go. So when I get the machine here, I turn on everything and I start learning just by myself. I hit my shoes, wood, walls, everything what I can possibly shoot and just see what I can do. So most everybody who have, has seen a dry ice video will kind of associate it with undercarriage cleaning. Um, and it's a really good way to do that, but I know that there's a lot of other things that dry ice can be used for. What are some of those uses? We can do the interior vents, the door jams, the engine bay, the trim, and, and we don't abrade the surface. And we'll do what takes somebody two hours in 10 minutes. Well, you know, about 50% of our customers are in car cleaning in Germany, but the 50%, the other 50% are industrial customers, plastic mold customers, you know, mobile services, for example. I think there's a great potential in it for, for example, AC cleaning. You know, just get a compressor on your truck, get the small machine here, ride around up and down the neighborhood, clean the ACs, charge, charge a few hundred dollars for it, do it every six months or everything. That's gonna be a great business. And um, also for restaurants, kitchen cleaning. So basically, when, when you imagine, you know, I always like to talk in pictures, everything you wanna clean was a high pressure cleaner, but you say, oh, I don't want all this mess, go to dryers. I'm trying to use it, the dry ice, basically for engine bay, undercarriage cleaning, wheels, of course, any suspension parts, door jams, that's pretty good. And any plastic, any rubber trims on the Porsche, basically, because we're doing a lot Porsche. Also the fabric top, what we can clean it very well with this thing. Like people are freaked out when I'll shoot a stream at a two, three, four hundred thousand dollar car on the surface, on the, on the body paint, you know, and getting the wax out of, you know, the trim areas that are so difficult. It's fabulous for that. But again, you know, we can also strip paint with the same machine. So, you know, I've posted pictures and videos and, you know, I've had people respond, just what I was afraid of. I, I was worried this could actually take paint off. Well, it can, but you know, it's like everything else. It's about understanding the limits, either you either gotta get trained and then practice, or just if you wanna do it on your own, just tear up your own stuff first. <laughs> what is it best at the dry ice cleaning? Um, that's a hard question because I think it's good for a lot of things, <laughs> detailing. Um, I say to start with interior cleaning, for example. I think in very, very many areas of application, it just saves you a bunch, a lot of time because the drying time goes, goes away. You don't have drying time. Cleaning fabric seats is great. You know, the dashboard, for example, to go in all the edges, corners, the venting system and everything, where, where it takes you minutes before it's just seconds done with dry ice. So the time saving aspect of it is just adding up with every edge and corner of the car. Any artifact, I don't care what it is, you got a shot at trying it out. I do tennis shoes, I've done stainless steel grills, I've done, I mean, it's endless many people using for airplanes like i mean like in the airplane industry it was one of the maybe start industry when they started using dry ice for the huge generators and motors and whatever like need be clean what is greasy the dry ice it works very well and that's what people are using a lot for uh cleaning these big giants you know, engines or whatever is there. Dry ice, which is CO2, carbon dioxide, it's getting shot out of these machines at a very high velocity. It seems a little dangerous. Are there any dangers associated with dry ice cleaning? 
there's tons of dangers to using it. Probably the most common is, you know, we, as human beings, we, we assimilate things uh, and, and, and you get a little piece of ice under your glove if you're working with water ice. And you, you would might, you know, oh, so what? It'll melt off, no big deal. If you get two or three grains, three millimeter grains of dry ice under your glove and you slough it off like it ain't gonna be no big deal, <laughs> you're gonna find out in a few seconds that you just have a new tattoo. <laughs> You've just been branded. I mean, it's 108 degrees negative. There's a reason that when I pick it up on a bare hand, I'm shaking it all the time because I don't want it just sitting there. It'll burn you. You always have to remember that it is a tool. And with every tool, you can either, you know, with a hammer, you can hit your finger and hurt yourself. So you need to be careful. Or um, also when you, you know, try to put a nail in the wall and you hit the wall, you, there could be a, a hole in the wall also. So be careful when it comes to dry ice. It's like I said, it, it turns from the solid state to the gas state and it's CO2. So when you transport it, always take care that the windows might be open, you know, that you have fresh air available. Also when you work in a car, open all the doors and just to be safe. The dry ice just, you know, it vaporizes and um, pushes away the oxygen. So, but that's a slow process. So when you work in a car and you feel that there's not enough air in there anymore, just open the doors, go out and um, breathe in and breathe one or two times and it's, it's gonna be fine. CO2 is just a normal part of your, of your body processes. You inhale oxygen, you exhale so CO2, so it's not harmful for you. It's just a concentration. So just be careful that you have enough fresh air around. That's what you want to take care of. It's dangerous stuff. It's expanding all the time. So if you take a typical 500 pound bin of ice and you say, okay, it's the three by three by four and multiply that cubic feet by 800, that's the space that will be filled with this gas and it's like goes to the ground. So, you know, if you're at 4,000, 40,000 parts per million down low and less at the top and you're surviving, walking around, feeling a little lightheaded, if you fall over and it's that thick down there, you're done, <laughs> you're gone. Yeah, so it's a little dangerous if you're not thoughtful about it. Dry ice is an abrasive material that can clean very sensitive parts without damage uh, and you can adjust it to actually clean heavy parts, even blast off paint if you wanted to. Knowing these settings and what you can and can't clean is very important so you're not damaging these surfaces. If you, let's say, start blasting undercarriage, you don't know what, what is under the dirt, right? Or what is under the coat, paint, whatever is there, and you can end up with some damage, which actually happened on this car. We exposed what some type of owner tried to like mask before he sold the car and we exposed that so new owner has to fix it, which he's totally okay with it. But you have to be careful like what you're doing, what are you blasting off. Uh, you have to know actually the car, each car. For example, Porsche, I know them very well so far and they have some surfaces painted from factory with black. My employees, they didn't know before when they started and we damaged actually one car. What I remember when I talk with my client because they try too much remove the black coating what was everywhere on the wheel well where it shouldn't be but there is a line what should stay there and they didn't know and they tried so you can definitely you have to know the car what you blasting then the material whatever you blasting you have to be uh, careful about areas with, when they are not perfect when they are already damaged with chips anything because you can blast it off and also like I said it's a tool and uh, with every tool you need to be careful so when you have a very sensitive material, don't go on it with 140 PSI and you know, you might blow it off. You know, just when you, when you don't know the mater material that you work with, there's a, there's a basic rule. Low pressure and, huge, and bigger distance. So work your way through it, get to know the material, be careful with it. So what do you need to get into dry ice? What machines do you need? What equipment do you need? How much is it actually gonna cost you to start providing this service? And so where do you start? Almost exclusively, everybody starts seeing a video, social media, YouTube, wherever it might be. Now the question is, can you watch enough on the videos to discern how to start and do this? Some have, I did, and I'm not the smartest guy in the world. So 
it's possible. Well, talking about the cost of dry ice cleaning, I mean, dry ice cleaning is around for, I would say, 20, 15, 20 years already. And um, normally what you would use to clean dry ice is like huge um, machines that weigh up to, I would say, 80 to 150 pounds maybe. So there is huge equipment involved in it. And also you would need a huge uh, compressed air system, very specialized which would cost, I would say, something between fifty and $80,000 probably to do it properly. And for, but for, for some time, there are smaller machines around, just like, for example, the dry energy machines, which are very suitable, actually, um, for small workshops, because you maybe have to spend something between, let's say, six or $10,000 for the machine, and um, something between two and $5,000 for a decent, decent compressor and then you can actually start doing some work. But of course, the big machines have their place um, and the small machines have their place. To do the highest level work, you're gonna spend 100 grand or more, period. Like if you, if you trim it here and there, you might buy a used lift or a used compressor that you're happy with, but, but budget 100 grand for a full system, not including this booth, but 100 grand. If you want to dip your toe in the water with a smaller machine and a smaller compressor, you know, you're going to spend 25 grand. It, it, you know, by the time you buy a six to $10,000 compressed air solution and you buy a machine for you know, eight to 10 grand, maybe you find one used for 7,500 or six grand, uh, you're going to spend plus or minus 20. So, so just know going into it to have some opportunity to experience it yourself is budget 25 or 100 and you decide where you want to go first. Dry ice cleaning, it's not cheap to get into. Uh, I actually think this is a good thing. It, it keeps all the jokers out of the industry. Uh, it's expensive to get all the equipment and everything, but I think once you get everything, there's a very large opportunity to make some very good money. Basically the price in the United States, what I know is between 200 and 300 dollars per hour. It's difficult to say something like you know, this car will cost $2,000, this car will cost like $3,000 because you just don't know what the time you will end up with. And I had first two cars what I ever blasted. It was both 1989 Porsche 930 Turbos, both same mileage, around 30,000 miles cars, and both end up with different results. And one because probably was from East Coast, another car spent whole time in California and it was different, definitely what I can tell on the transmission and all the things. Now everybody asks, how much does it cost? Okay, so it, we charge 250 an hour. What, but what does that mean? You don't know how fast it is. You don't know how fast it isn't. You don't know how effective it is. I don't know what your expectations are. I don't know what your car is. You have two identical cars, one with an oil leak for 20,000 miles, one without. This is gonna take twice as long to clean and you'd be mad at me because you said, well, my buddy had a TR6 and his only cost 1,800 and you charged me 3,500. Well, you had a freaking oil leak that you know covered the bottom of the car with oil. It took longer. So I caution people, you know, if you have a small machine, you can't work the same speed as I can with one of those. So, you know, if you charge 250 an hour with a small machine, I can, I, I'm basically doing twice of the work for the same rate, it's going to be a minefield for people for a long time before this settles out into, okay, what quality of work you want. So that's, that's where our service providers are focused. Hey, I wanna understand your expectations. Then I can help you understand what it might cost. First couple of months, you will waste a little bit the time when you're adjusting the machine, where you don't know what you should use for this and that. For me right now, after, I would say 15 months what I'm in the business. So it's pretty good. I can basically what I see, I can already adjust the machine and I know what I should to expect and I can be very efficient, but still the price we trying to charge it per hour if we looking for perfection or what I did a little bit different than other guys, I set up budget and I set up kind of like three packages different for my clients because many clients, they just want kind of like clean. They don't care about like perfection. They don't care about like many other parts, what they never will see it. So they just want to see some surfaces. They want maybe cleaning some stuff for 
see leaks. Some people, they want to just like know they have kind of like clean car, but doesn't need to be perfect. So I set up a budget for $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, and that can give you like really nice look on different type of cars. How much are you going to charge for that? Maybe you find something that works out for you and your customers. It's not a general rule out there. You know, you always need to charge what your customer is willing to pay. For example, I have some customers in Germany that say, oh, can you, or when the customers come to them, they say, oh, can you do me an engine cleaning? He's saying, okay, I'm charging 200 bucks for that. If they say, okay, they are in. If they say no, he is not negotiating about with them about the price. They say, okay, go away, go somewhere else, you know, and we, I will see you back in two weeks probably because the work you get somewhere else, you will not be satisfied. It's really about expectations and what are you starting with. Getting the materials, how hard is it to get the materials? How much does it cost and, and where do you get it? A pound of dry ice is gonna be about $150, $2. But that's only when you buy small quantities. You know, when you go to a guy and say, I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be your regular customer, I'm going to take so and so much pounds a week maybe, the price might drop down under a dollar. All right, so we're at the bottom of the food chain. If you call and say, I want dry ice to a local provider that you find online or otherwise, the first thing they're gonna do is say, oh no, here's another guy that wants one bin of dry ice. Not exactly the recipe for success for that dry ice sales organization. They want people to call and say, I want a thousand pounds a week, every week, right? So you're not gonna be favored or loved on because you want one bin to try this out. So be prepared for that. They're gonna to try to push you off. Ah, I really don't know, or you'll get a high price. We've had reports of 50 cents a pound, what it should be, be presented as much as $1.50 or $2 a pound just to dissuade you. So where do you get it when someone says you can't get it in your area? Start with this premise. If you drink soda or beer locally, there's CO2 in your market because they're all made with liquid CO2. So before someone tries to share with you that you don't have access to dry ice, it's you gotta dig for it sometimes, but it's there. That's a good question for me as a guy coming from Germany, how available it is here in, Germ uh, in, in the US. But I could say when I was in Orlando, for example, for mobile tech, I just called two or three guys and they all could offer me the dry ice I needed. Now we are here in Chicago, we just called two or three guys and we didn't have a problem of getting it. So I think it's a commodity, you can get it basically everywhere, you just need to find a guy that is delivering you on a regular basis and um, I think uh, that won't be a problem. But I give the advice, before you buy a machine of course, find a guy that delivers you with the dry ice. So how much dry ice do you need to clean a car interior? So it's, it's always like a hard question because it depends on what the car looks like. You know, if you have a real messed up car, of course you need more. Yeah, the thing is like, you know, always many people, they calling me, hey, my car is super clean. My car is like low mileage car. That doesn't necessarily mean like it will be easy to clean because you know, the car, it's depend where you drove before, how you take care of the car before. I saw 100,000 mile car and was much faster to clean it compared with 30,000 mile car. Why? I don't know. The car probably was maybe somewhere sitting in, I don't know what, but it was soaked with some different type of dirt than the other car. So it's just difficult to say exact the time, but I would say from my own experience, Porsche from 70s till 90s, I'm spending usually like 12 hours on each Porsche. It can be sometimes 15 hours. The biggest job so far what I have, it was probably 22 hours on one car, which was some Cadillac from 60s. But other than that, you should stay between 10 and 16 hours for a really good job. Definitely, if you're looking for, I don't know, many clients also, they're telling me like, hey, I want everything. Remove the bumpers, remove that and that. Okay, that's different story than if you're dealing with just normal car, what you, what you can remove some plastic covers, that's different if you're removing bumpers because of course I can remove anything and same with the engine bay. People coming here without engine, they just want to clean everything before they will put a refreshed engine in, but they have to also realize I have to blast it more things. It's not something because if the engine is in, 
okay, I'm blasting just a couple of things, right? But if it's nothing there, I can blast it everything and that can create more time. But basically I would say the average time for classic car is like 12 hours and it can be a little bit less, but mostly it's around 12 hours and plus based on the condition. There's different machines on the market that have different purposes and can do different things. What machines are there? and what machines should you start with? In my shop I'm using, and I never tested anything else than cold jet. Uh, I had a couple different machines from cold jet. I'm using cold jet PCS60. Then you can adjust also the amount of ice. I can go from 0.1 pound per minute till four pound per minute, which is like a lot of ice where you can clean it. And that can be very efficient if you're removing rubberized coating underneath the car. This machine, solves some really interesting challenges and problems that those larger systems create. They are fabulous, they are necessary. Uh, when you get underneath the car, you gotta have that power. This machine's really interesting sweet spot is something that you probably haven't seen anywhere yet. We like this machine mostly because it's not as loud as the big machine, so you can use it virtually anywhere in a shop. It does not require a huge compressor. You probably have a compressor large enough to run this machine. And it's incredibly mobile to move around. It doesn't have a big one inch hose. It doesn't have a power cord. It's fully pneumatic. We plug in the airline in the back. We put dry ice in the hopper and we start cleaning. We call this machine, it's the Vario because it gives you a lot of options. Okay. You know, you can have the abrasive material, but you can also, you know, if you just have a small job and you want to work very efficient, you can adjust the ice flow rate on this machine also. Is this from an one to air five. adjustment? No, it's not adjusting the air, it's just adjusting the amount of ice that goes with the, with the air. So if you have little, uh, if you have less air, um, ice, yeah. you have less cleaning power. And if you put it to five, you have more cleaning power. So, but gotcha. you don't even, you don't always need the full power to clean something. So then you can, you know, just adjust it here to one, for example, and then your ice flow rate goes down. Talking about efficiency, you know, if you just want to clean a headliner, you just have two or three spots in there. Okay. You just put it on one and, you know, give it a little zip and it's clean. So you save about 45 minutes, you know, shampooing yeah. the whole thing Clean because whole you, thing, yeah. with water, it's hard to just do spot cleaning because you get the circles around it. Well, right? water doesn't clean real well and you usually have to use a chemical, but That's when you use a chemical, you uh, disturb the adhesive there mm -hmm. and eventually you have a sagging headliner yeah. that nobody likes. No. With the initial cost of these machines being rather high, one question that I have is actually like, how do you maintain it? What's the maintenance? service guide to it and how long do they actually last? So how long do the machines last and talk about maintenance, especially when you buy something that's not made in the US, that's an important uh, point actually. Um, our machines are basically uh, maintenance without any maintenance because you don't have to change any oil, we don't have any power, uh, the, par the parts are made to last basically for a long time. Um, I have customers that bought a machine back in 2014, industrial customers, who put about 600 pounds of dry ice in there every week, cleaning, cleaning molds, and they never called me for maintenance reasons. We sold a few machines in Germany, and maybe I have to maintenance or have to repair, lay, let's say, one or two a month out of a thousand machines. That's, uh, that's, I think that's quite good. And so to sum it up, the, la the machines are quality made in Germany, we produce them ourselves and there's no maintenance involved. Of course, when you have any repair issues, we are there for you. Um, we can ship the machine, we can, you know, we have our partners here on the ground that can uh, help you with repair issues. So um, I wouldn't uh, think about that there's any problems about that. We, we are there for you to help you. Yeah. So what happens if someone buys one of these and then it breaks? Me? What are you, what are we... Me? What are we gonna do? We fix it or we give them another one. Yeah. They're one year warranty and it's a it's very robustly I mean, produced. Not, there's not much yeah. to it. And and they don't there are no parts from the Pacific Rim. And there's no um, there's no electric motor or anything, no. so there's less to go wrong. I mean yeah. hoses I think is something would definitely need, you definitely need to stock. Yep. Because this, 
you know, guys are going to run these yeah, over and break yeah, stuff. Absolutely. And, you know, definitely dry ice, it's not designed for removing rust. What many people actually, they, they're getting confused. They're thinking like the rust is pretty good actually with dry ice, but not for automotive business, not for automotive uh, machines. I mean, the dry ice machines for automotive business are not designed for it. The industrial machines, because they are super heavy duty, you can blast it, probably the rust off, but then in the same time, I can blast off the paint. And that's why we're not doing like with these bigger machines, we're using our PCS 60, which is designed for automotive business. And then it's not designed for removing rust. We can do it, but I'm not guarantee anything about rust. It's something like what I'm, telling my clients it's like a bonus if we can clean it but other than that you know people they have to of course like uh be careful when they're using the eyes in the closed space you know just like that uh you can you can be dead that's for sure because the eyes special in the winter time when you're trying to close everything and it's it's uh cold outside you don't want cold inside even more what are you producing from ice but you can be very quickly dead if you're not using ventilation and everything so you have to be careful with ice i had lots of fun exploring and learning about dry ice in the last several months uh, i'm really excited to announce the service that we're going to bring into chicago auto pros we already have our air compressor installed um, and we already have a couple machines ready to go so super excited to teach others about this new revolutionary way of cleaning. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' comments, what you think. Check the description below. We're gonna be doing some trainings that you can come out here to Chicago Auto Pros and learn all about dry ice. Thanks for watching.